Are we close enough for the big pyramid? I want to see how high the circle is. Deeper. Welcome back to Kid Mars Plus TV. My name is Trajan, and today we'll be playing Discovery Tour Ancient Egypt using the Assassin's Creed game. Okay. Okay. So, here it is. All of the story. Oh. This like. Oh, oh right, that was a horse. There's a. <laughs> Check out what we yeah, do with yeah. the horse. Um, and so uh, I get off. Whoa. Um. So basically, we're going to go up on this. Let's go to that temple. Pyramid. They're the same. <laughs> they they both look the same, kind of. Pyramid is a triangle, and that's what the shape's called. <laughs> For a 3D triangle, it's called a pyramid. So I don't know why they called it that. I mean, I guess we did the Americans. I mean, everyone else did, but why would Egypt even say that? Maybe like called it something else, like like a um, 3D triangle or something. And oh, and then we'll do the big pyramid because I know you guys, some of you guys might want to see that too. Well, maybe a lot of you guys just like waiting for like once we get up here and then get there. So I'm gonna hurry up there. Go up more. <laughs> I'm saying it again and again. Why is it zooming out? Don't zoom out. Yeah. Oh, we can't fix it. Yes. Okay. Um. Up here, and then, and then, and then up. That one left. I don't have to go left. I just wee. Uh, we're almost up there. Yay. Ah! Okay, so we're on. We're so close. Well, close enough to be almost there. Um, anyways, <laughs> sometimes you can actually pull. Well, of course you can. You can see gravity's pushing you down. Anyways, so um, oh, we're at the top. Yes. And then we're gonna do a big pyramid. Are we close enough to the big pyramid? I want to see how high the circle is. Deeper. What? Hold on. Nope. This is a, this is short. This is a short one. Ah! Found a way. Found a way. No, I don't want to go to that gap. No. Ah, oh, man, so close. It's always so hard to get down the temples, the, the pyramids, um, because cause there's always lots of gaps. And, um, yeah, as you can see, that wasn't very well. Anyways, wait, what? We went on the high temple? Oh no, that's just another... Huh. <laughs> I was getting... I was getting confused. Right now... So we're... many tours, so little time. 
Yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> Why did it say that? Um. So there were a caravan of camels, but I'm pretty sure I'll just a whole bunch of nope. camels. But well, they're not camels. They're horses. <laughs> oh, here they are. What? They saw weapons from the actual. Wow. I'm gonna ride one of these horses. Wee, and I'm gonna go find the mission that we might want to do. Well, and also do eagle thing. See what we do. Over there. Oh, oh, there's one over there. Fast travel. <laughs> I like that. So we fastly traveled. In. How many minutes? Five minutes. Okay, let's start. The Welcome show. to Menkara's funerary complex. Not here, but just in case. The dimensions of Menkara's pyramid are much less grandiose. However, unlike its predecessors, Menkara's pyramid shows a great deal of complexity in its internal and external finish. The outside was partially covered in red granite, while the internal walls were richly decorated. This latter innovation would not catch on until the end of the fifth dynasty, when pyramid texts began to adorn the walls. Pyramid tech. Oh right. Um. Uh. <laughs> um. So back then, actually, back when they, they still had pyramids, well, they still do. Um. Yeah. They uh, created text, and now we actually read. Menkara's the pyramid contains two sloping passages, both located in the northern side of the structure. The upper one was abandoned during the construction phase, whereas the lower one, slightly above the base of the monument, constitutes the real entrance. The lower passage leads to a first room, which, for the first time since the reign of Djoser, is decorated with engraved false doors. Ooh. False doors, okay. This is the inside of the pyramid, or should I say, like, the math stuff. Anyways, so that was how the pyramid was built. That's like, there's the inside of it. I'm not going to those holes, holes. After I'm done with the tour. One of the pyramids actually had, like, a cave area, well, a map in it. While Menkara's pyramid complex was unfinished at the time of his death, it was hastily and somewhat shabbily completed by his successor, Shepsikov. Even so, this funerary structure marks a watershed in the history of this kind of monument. From then onwards, the pyramid shrank, whereas the mortuary temple expanded both in its quantitative and qualitative aspects. Of particular note, it is within Menkara's mortuary temple that one can find the heaviest block of limestone ever used for a pyramid complex, weighing in at over 200 tons. 200 tons. There it is. Full screen. Well, the picture is full screen. Full screen it. Um. Oh. Menkara's causeway was completed in mud brick by the king's successor, whereas the lower part was nothing more than a simple ramp. As for the valley temple, it was built in two phases. The foundations were first laid out in limestone during Menkara's reign. But the temple itself was completed in mud brick afterwards. As such, the valley temple was soon damaged and ended up being completely rebuilt during the sixth dynasty. Oh, this way. 
see the climb down. And I try to press control so I jump. No, not control at. Ah. Three small structures, referred to as Menkara's Queen's Pyramids, were erected along the southern side of the main pyramid. One of them was a smooth-faced pyramid, while the other two were more basic step pyramids. This. It is difficult to assess whether the latter were designed as such or were left unfinished with no casing to smooth out their surfaces. Those are the basic step pyramids. And yep, th there's a basic step pyramid right there. Well, oh, that one's like still in shape. Look at it. The easternmost pyramid was built with the traditional rooms and corridors found within a satellite pyramid meant to house the king's ka. However, a granite sarcophagus was found within leading to the conclusion that it was used as an actual tomb rather than as a symbolic cenotaph. Drawing on these observations, some assume that this pyramid was first built as a satellite pyramid for the king's ka, before seeing its purpose change to that of a queen's tomb. Which queen, however, remains a mystery. So... that? Oh, the tour has been completed. Well, um, oh, uh, holes. Let's see if there are some holes. Oh, I didn't have this. Where are they? Ah, oh, there they are. I see them. And uh, I wish you could dig in this. Dig out some other stuff. Like, something like ancient. And then I would like tell you what it is. Maybe that could be like a future update in this game. Because it wouldn't make sense to do that, and also for the original game they they made. Yeah, it, it was hard for me to get up. Um. So, all right, this is for better lighting because we're going in a dark place. One to do all this. Let's see what's in. Those are all the objectives. Well, the, those were all the objectives. And, um, what's over right here? I don't think I want to go down there yet. But I do want to go down here. So, um, they probably... Wait, wait, wait. I thought they led the same way. No, nope. but the, I meant. I meant up here. They both did the same way? Yeah. They did. Hmm, that was just like another way? Ooh. Oh, not the same way. Um. Yeah, pretty sure we just have to go this way. Oh, yeah, they both lead the same way. So, there is, um, there should be another one. Hold up. I got to... Let's see, let's see. Um, Eagle Vision. Let's see what else there is. Um, so, ooh, over there. Fast travel. Yep. I like how it just goes in shape. Okay. 
Wait, before we start this, what's in there? Or is it just like a some sort of wall? Why are they running? They came from this one. I assume they there maybe? Yeah, I wonder why they're running. Did they get like scared? Or something? Um Oh wait, they just they they um why would they run away from their campfire? That wouldn't make sense. Wait, that's a little glitch. I sat down and then I want to sit down. Again. I wonder. I'm not do the uh, mission over here. So let's start the tour. Welcome to Coffrey's funerary complex. Yeah. Since the very beginning of the fourth dynasty. Mortuary temples were built adjacent to pyramids on the eastern side. Such a location, facing the rising sun, as well as the world of the living as a whole, held an important symbolic meaning, for it was within the mortuary temple that kings were revived through daily rituals. Um, okay. So I want to show the whole entire picture. Here it is. Oh, we're going to the... Uh, In its standard form, a mortuary temple was divided into two parts. A front area which consisted of a vestibule and a courtyard, and an area in the back, where all sacred elements were located. The back of the temple incorporated several essential features, including an inner sanctuary with a false door, which allowed the soul of the pharaoh to travel between the world of the dead and the world of the living. The world of world. What's the difference? There we go. There's the yeah. The largest of all such structures, Khafre's mortuary temple, was entirely built with megalithic blocks of limestone from a nearby quarry and encased with granite. Parts of Khafre's mortuary temple, particularly the courtyard walls, are thought to have been decorated with splendid reliefs. However, not a single image of the king has been discovered inside the mortuary temple. Ah. Okay, so... Khufu's direct successor, Jedifrey, followed the custom which required each king to establish a new site for their funerary accommodation and chose Abu Rawash as his last resting place. When the time came to build his own funerary complex, Khafre, also one of Khufu's sons and the successor to Jedifrey, broke with tradition and returned to Giza. Not only did Khafre thumb his nose at tradition, but he did so in a way which he hoped would allow him to overshadow his father's most important monument. Wait, that's an eagle on the back of his head. So, yeah, let's get to the next one. That's far away. Why didn't they put it closer? Couldn't they just do that? Oh, right. There's a map. They have to... They had to put close to the place where they want you to look. So. Though Khafre's pyramid is smaller than Khufu's, it was cunningly built on a more elevated bedrock layer than the Great Pyramid, making it appear higher than any other pyramid at Giza. Today, Khafre's pyramid is the only one among the three at Giza that still has the upper part of its limestone casing. Wow, well, true. It's the only one that has the top part of its limestone. Hey, there they are again. A brain Considered a most sacred area, the Giza necropolis was strictly defined 
both geographically and physically. One time later, yeah. an eight meter thick Tura limestone wall completely it. surrounded the Great Pyramid. The only way inside would have been through the mortuary temple. From the reign of Sneferu and onwards, the subsidiary pyramid became a common feature within the pyramidal complex. The function of the subsidiary pyramid, however, smaller in size and in height than the royal tomb, remains unclear, though some believe that it was meant to house the Ka of the pharaoh. Wonder there was a competition that had of who can make the, the smallest temple. <laughs> In mainstream media, the Ka is often defined as the soul of the deceased. The truth is a bit more complicated. Within the ancient Egyptian funerary belief system, the Ka was a component of a living person, which separated itself from the body at the time of death. It represented the deceased's vital essence. In order for the deceased to ascend to a new life, whether in this world or the next, the Ka had to be embodied in a statue and its existence maintained through offerings and rituals. Rituals? Ah! To bring back the dead. Mostly. Why Within Khafre's subsidiary pyramid, a wooden box containing pieces of cedar was discovered by archaeologists. When reassembled, it turned out to be a shrine mounted on a sled. Just as with the solar barges found around Khufu's pyramid, it seems Khafre's shrine and sled were ritually disposed of after his funeral. Well then, just to show you it up close. Because I want to do that. Okay, we completed it. So, um, what I think about the game is it's, well, it's good. It's good because you get to explore e ancient Egypt and, um, learn about it. Because right now, today's 2018, it's dangerous to go there. I want to suggest going there. But if you want to, like learn about it, you can go into the Discovery Tour Agent Egypt. It's a great way to learn about Egypt. I would like to see more people um do this. Maybe other people could um do some other games kinda like this where they take um their own game engine that like has a force or something, like Uncharted and Learn about like the different kinds of animals and features and the ruins and stuff. That would be cool. Leave your t suggestions of what you thought about the game in the comments below or if you've already played it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button if you like the video. Bye!